Hello everyone, this is Alex, the designer for Toonkin's Virtual World, and today I am going to do a follow-up video on the 3D modeling for the um, item design that we did the other day uh, on a live stream from a uh, user-inspired item, which is the awesome Rainbow Brain Freeze Ice Cream Cone Hat. Um, I will be using Affinity Designer for the 2D and the Maya uh, program for the 3D sprites. What uh, I've got here set up is the UV maps. So um, these are images that are going to be wrapped around 3D objects. That way I don't have to uh, model everything out and, and have a very large file. So uh, if you didn't get to see how I did the waffle cone for the uh, profile view, um, please go back and review that video and uh, then on the left side you'll see that I have the UV map for what the ice cream is going to be. This is the 3D penguin uh, file. I don't usually work with an all color uh, but I thought for this video it would be fun just to show you guys um, the, the closest to the, the final that you'll see. Um, I just basically started out um, getting a, a polygon sphere and uh, because it's an ice cream cone that I'm trying to emulate and just referencing the picture that uh, I drew the other day I'm just gonna try and make this as ice cream like as possible and as close to the 2D version as I can um, I don't always do the 2D first um, sometimes I'll do the 3D version first and then I will reference the 3D version to then try and match the, uh, the, the, the 2D uh, version later. Um, so here I'm just taking a sculpting tool and just pulling some little spheres from the larger one just to give an idea as to uh, you know make it look like a, a, a ball of ice cream um, and then I'll later go in and, and add all the colors and everything to it. Now you'll notice that um, I'm not really working too close to the 3D um, penguin or to the uh, the ice cream. I try and just keep a little bit of a distance. A lot of artists uh, will try and model really up close. And um, because of the type of game and the nature of how big the characters look on the screen, I want to be really careful that um, I don't put an immense amount of detail in something very, very small that will probably... Uh, not be very likely to be seen. So I try and just keep uh, a, a sort of far away view and you'll see me kind of zooming in and zooming out as I go just to make sure I get the overall um, design right and the overall silhouette of, of the design so that when you're playing the game you you, you, you know what it is. And, and that's just really important. Um, you, you'll also notice behind the penguin and, and, and the ice cream that I'm modeling there's these green little cameras. Uh, the, there are eight of those that are uh, wrapped around the model. And that is what I use to create all 64 frames um, that uh, we use for, for Toonkins for every item. Uh, there are eight different angles of, uh, of view. And then you have all of the movements that you'll see here in a little bit um, and all, for all the animations. What I'm doing now, um, I've got the, the shape of the ice cream kind of where I, I want it. So I'm moving on to the cone. Now, there is a cone shape that I could have used, but uh, I, I really didn't want to use that just because the UV map that I did uh, was more rectangular. So I'm actually just taking um, initially a cube and stretching it out to uh, a, a 3D uh, rectangle. And now I'm taking the UV map and, and adding it to it. Um, and you can see here, it's just a, a PNG um, added to it, and it's just going to take the image and wrap it around. The, the nice thing about that is if I need to make any tweaks on the design, I can do that on uh, Affinity Designer and then resave it and just rewrap re the, the object versus having to remodel something from scratch. So it definitely saves a lot of time. It gives the effect that I'm looking for, and if you design your 2D uh, UV wraps in such a way that they kind of look like they're 3D, you can really get away with um, doing a lot of really neat little trickery to the eye. Um, so instead of, you know, 
uh, making all of those waffle patterns in, in, in 3D. They're, they're just a 2D mask. Um, so you can see here I've gone into my UV editor and I'm just kind of tweaking it around uh, and, and making sure that, that what I see is really what I think I'm going to want. Uh, I'm going to bend this. I'm going to roll it around like you would a real ice cream cone. Um, and, and that was kind of the idea. Um, so you can see here it's just a, just a cylinder now, but if I tweak the angle in which it's being rotated, it all of a sudden gets this, uh, this, 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 this cone shape. So um, it, it makes it a lot easier. If I were to have started with a cone, I would have to wrap the cone differently, and my initial image would have to be uh, almost like a, I guess, a, a more complicated shape than just a, a rectangle. So here I'm just tweaking a little bit of it. Um, Maya has this really cool feature where you can go into your edit tab and uh, delete the history. So now that cone can't be unwrapped. Uh, it's, it's forever wrapped unless I just, you know, undo everything. Uh, so I can just play with the cone shape now as if it really was a cone to begin with. And from here I can tweak any of the UV that I need if I see it's just, you know, I, I thought that the uh, the wrap was just a little bit too large. I can, I can shrink it around. Um, it's really nice to work in a 3D space to be able just to see everything for what it is um, and, and tweak it accordingly. So now I'm just going to uh, start putting the cone onto the uh, melted ice cream. And uh, the ice cream will get a UV wrap uh, put on as well right, right after this. But, um, uh, you know, again, working in 3D space, I can, I can just tweak according to what my initial image is going to be. So I, I'm, at the same time that I'm modeling this, I have a window open with the 2D version that I made. Uh, the other day, just to make sure I'm getting all the angles right, making sure I even get, you know, little things like uh, um, certain lighting, certain textures. Those are all real, really important when you're trying to make a, a uh, you know, two, two items that are supposed to look like um, one representation of the other. Uh, I know that there's, um, you know, some some games out there that they go really, really, you know, low low poly, uh, and what that means is that. Um, all the shapes are, are, are polygons and they have these little grid lines there and uh, a lot of games really need you to have a, a lower amount of them because they do take a lot of room if you're exporting or importing um, 3D full files but uh, because we're using the, the 2D renders from, from all of this I can uh, afford to, to go really high resolution on this and, and, and really make a really sharp and crisp uh, image for the game. So again uh, you know, as I'm working this around, I'm just seeing, you know, different things that I need to tweak, uh, make sure that they, they look good. And, and again, you can see from the view that I am, uh, I'm not very close to it at all. So, um, you know, I know this is going to be a lot smaller on the screen, so I want to make sure that all of those lines are not, um, you know, too close together or too far apart and that they're really doing the uh, the item uh, its its purpose. So, uh since I've done the, the live stream, I had a lot of questions as to, you know, am I going to do this again? You know, um, what about all the other submissions? So my, my thinking is to do a, um, a fan-made um, item uh, once a month. I, I think that um, will we'll kind of keep it competitive and, and keep it special. If I did this all the time, you know, multiple times a month, uh, I, I think the, uh, the, the uniqueness would, would, would kind of you know, run run dry and, and, and people would just kind of see it as, well, you know, anybody can, can get an item now uh, made. But um, uh, it's, it's, to me, important that I get the, the feeling behind the image. It's not, you know, I'm not looking for something that is a polished version. I, I really genuinely like the, the concept. And, and for me, if it's fun, if it's unique, if it's, you know, something silly, that we can put in the game, that's, that's definitely something that will draw my attention. So uh, for those of you that are creating artwork all the time, uh, thank you so much. You guys inspire me every day, uh, even on some of the items that I make. So, um, you know, keep at it, and, and you'll see more of these. I promise you that. You'll see I've added the UV map to the ice cream now, and I just, I'm tweaking the, um, the overall... 
rotation of it just to make sure that you know there's there's all the colors that I that I would like on there. Um, it, it's a weird shape to to, to wrap, so I want to make sure that I get it right. And uh, I'm going to be adding the sprinkles afterwards. If, if for those of you that are wondering, well, hey, the original image had sprinkles. Where's the sprinkles on this? Well, they're 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 coming. Um, I didn't want to add sprinkles to the image because I was afraid that I wouldn't get the scale right. So I want to make sure that um, I get everything that I need to get correct here first, and then I'll move on and I'll change the. Uh, the image later because it's just a matter of changing um, the the uh, I guess the the source image everything else uh, Maya respects and understands and says okay um, this was here this was there and and the map stays the same um, so you can see there's a couple little defects there on on the ice cream cone itself that I'm going to tweak around um, and and I think I've got the overall shape that I that I really am pleased with on the ice cream itself. Um, so I'm going to move on here and just add the sprinkles. I've kept my um, my file from Affinity open. Um, I'm going to be tweaking these little um, ridges and lines because I noticed on the 3D model they were just too large. They were they were not really correct. So I'm making them a little bit smaller, and then uh, that will give the overall wrap a little bit more of an appeal. Um, so here I'm going again and uh, just refreshing that image. So it's, it should be the same file name, just changing the image again. So now we get to see what it's going to uh, what it's going to look like. So that's a little bit better. Um, I think I'm okay with that. I don't really like where it's um, you know a harsh purple to pink line down the middle, but I'm I'm pretty okay with the scale of the uh, of the lines and and everything else. Um, and I'm just going to tweak as I go. Um, a lot of people asked why um, I do 2D graphics versus 3D graphics in, in the game uh, because we are using Unity. And again, it, com it comes down to just what I'm comfortable in and also um, you know, how large or small you want the overall game to be. So we found that by doing uh, images being rendered and putting them on a sprite sheet kind of the old school way, was uh, you know a little bit better as far as a file type than than putting it into uh, as a whole in in 3D. So uh, not to mention it does allow me to um, to just do both. Um, you know both expand on the uh, 2D world and and in the 3D world just as a you know personal um, test to to just being an artist. Um, not really sure what I was trying out there. I think I, I'm oh I'm trying to uh, to get the little, the little smudge that fell down from the ice cream and is, is going to be on on the nose of the character. That's what this is. So um, I'm just trying to get like a little teardrop shape that um, just kind of fell on on the nose. And and remember, it everything has to fit all of the the character types. So because all of the characters are are loosely based on the penguin shape, uh, I know that. Um, you know, just from trial and error, from past designs, that um, I know what's going to work and what's not going to work. I know if I'm going to introduce ears or if I'm going to introduce a larger bill like I did with the, the platypus, um, you know, it works just fine. And if uh, if you've seen uh, some of the ambassadors in the game already and some of the developers, we, we've we put this item on the platypus and we've been walking around um, for the last day or so. And uh, it, it looks just fine, so uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, again, I'm tweaking with the UV map, uh, making sure I'm getting the right uh, scale. And that's really all that this is. It's just rinse and repeat. Uh, you know, I, I don't always use UV um, for finer, finer details. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll actually model them out. But uh, for something that um, is supposed to look like it's melted, um, I, I didn't really see where... Um, you know, modeling something like that out was was going to be, um, you know, um, the best result. Um, so here I'm actually um, trying to just make the the drips, and I, I started realizing that it just kind of doesn't look right. I'm tweaking it, I'm tweaking it, and it just didn't look correct to me. So um, I ended up, uh, you'll see here in, in, in a little bit, just removing that altogether and. Um, 
and just trying something else and that's kind of the process and and that's really the the part I enjoy the most is just trial and error see what works see what doesn't and, and then learn from it you know if I ever have to do something like this uh, similar I'll, I'll know exactly um, what paths I took and and I'll be able to make it even better the next time so um, even so sometimes I'll make an item twice three times uh, just till I really feel like I got it right and I just uh, nailed the overall expression of it because you know these are supposed to be fun items they're not you know something that um, should really take a long long time to to make um, but some of them do um, a lot of people were asking you know how long does it take to do an item uh, and and it just depends some of them have taken me a couple of hours uh, some of them have taken me, uh, you know, 10-15 uh, minutes. So it, it, it's just going to depend on what it calls. So uh, something like this where I haven't really done an item where I've been, you know, uh, modeling, you know, uh, and sculpting uh, an, an object, it was a little bit different for me to do versus a different hat type. So um, here I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to take the sculpting tool and just make the uh, the drips myself uh, and I, I really thought you know at first they, they kinda looked a little clunky but I ended up fixing them up and making them look a little better now if you've been following me on um, social media I posted a little while ago um, some behind the scenes um, videos and, the, and little snippets as to what happens after it's modeled and how it gets put onto a sprite sheet and so on so I'm not going to go I into that too too much here um, uh, you're not going to see the, the, the full render but um, uh, it's it's just really important that everything that you do even if it's something that you're doing on the fly like this you have an idea as to what your steps are going to be you have to have some sort of a basic plan um, otherwise you're gonna sit there for a long time and 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 get stumped on something so you know with little things like 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 this um, it's important just to you know even how I had planned to do the ice cream cone or just the ice cream itself um, I really thought about it as I was drawing the 2D because in a lot of ways the 2D version and the 3D version are actually modeled the same way. You, you, you'll you notice if you go back to the other video that you know um, I may have started with a triangle for the cone but the, the, the rest was pretty much the same way. Um, you know instead of doing a UV map for it I ended up doing a mask uh, and drawing inside of it and having all that adjusted for the uh, for the ice cream itself, it, it all was, was, was a lot of tweaking and a lot of molding and, and, and moving some lines around. So it's very, very similar. Um, so here, I believe I've, I've kind of gotten a grasp for how I want the ice cream to look. I'm just going to tweak again the, the overall color changes. You can see there's like a harsh pink that kind of pops up on the side. So if I render that side view, it's all of a sudden just going to look really pink, and I didn't really want that. I wanted a pretty even... Um, gradient between the pink and, and, and the purple um, and it's supposed to be you know melted anyway so so the colors are supposed to blend um, you know like you see so I thought that was that was really nice and now that I'm pretty happy with the overall ice cream design I am going in and adding the little drop that goes on to the nose I, I thought that's what I was doing before but um, I was actually just trying to get the drips on the rest of it first. Um, again, this is just something that you're gonna want, you're gonna need a model for, and that's why I have the penguin out. Um, but I, I'm keeping in mind that you know the platypus has um, you know a larger bill, and and it, I don't want things to collide. So I'm actually angling it a certain way, and and having it a certain distance away from the overall uh, beak from from the penguin, so that it, it so that it works. Um, it's not really the prettiest little drip, but again, it's going to be so small compared to what it looks like here on the screen that it's really more about getting the overall feeling of it. Um, it is important to get, for example, uh, one of the reasons why I have a UV map for the ice cream is there's a texture to the ice cream. Um, you guys saw how I, I, I put the texture onto the 2D version, and I really want to keep that 
in all aspects of the game because that's a style that I've established for this game. So um, it, it just is important to me that um, that the ice cream or any other item for that matter just gets the same feeling between the 3D version and the 2D version uh, so that it just doesn't look like it's a dumbed down uh, flat image uh, with, with, with no texture and no detail because um, the 3D character is actually what you see the most of because that's what you interact with, that's how you walk around, that's who you talk to so it's a very important that that image looks just as good as the 2D and of course when you open up your profile it's a expanded view so you get to see a little bit more uh, detail. So I'm just uh, going to UV map that little drop now. It's, I'm going to use the same image as before. Um, I'm going to have to just tweak the overall scale of it because uh, everything is going to be smaller. Um, so I just want to make sure that um, you know I get first of all the right color that I want from that map, um, and and it, everything is just kind of looking looking better. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and, and, and take a look at what that's going to look like. And you can see from that. Um, it, it just kind of looks a little bit funky still, so just some, some tweaking. Now I'm noticing here that I still have that um, stark difference between the purple and, and the pink on the ice cream, and uh, I'm 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 gonna figure out how to uh, how to change that a little bit just uh, just by tweaking some some information on there. So I'm just gonna zoom out, see if it really is something that's bothering me, put it through the motions, um, and you can see as I'm turning it, I, I really want to get a full view before I start rendering because again there's eight frames of view and 64 frames total for all of these animations so um, and that's per item so I, I want to make sure that if I am going to render it that it's going to be a final render and I don't have to go back um, sometimes I do have to go back sometimes I miss something sometimes I uh, I think back and I go oh man you know it just that looks too small or that is too large or it's just not working out um, so I'd rather get that out of the way at this stage than, than, than worry about it later um, and have to redo all of those. Um, so here I am, I'm just tweaking the, uh, the cone so that it doesn't look so distorted. Uh, I do want it to look like it's a wrapped cone, just like it's supposed to, but I don't want it to look uh, wrong. So um, I'm just tweaking that UV and uh, I believe I'll go back and, and, and mess around again with the, uh, with the overall ice cream um, when I add the sprinkles. So you can kind of see it's it's just tweaking adjusting um, you know making sure that you see everything in all the views just like you would if you were sculpting something in real life uh, that's that's the the benefit um, so here I went back to the affinity designer and I'm just making sprinkles the same way I did on the on the 2d profile version but I'm just making them a little bit smaller um, in in scale and um, it's it's really not um, a hard thing to do. I've just taken a line and I've expanded it to a stroke so that it makes it into an object and not just a line. Uh, and then I'm just copying, pasting, changing the colors, putting them in, in different configurations. And then once I have a pretty good um, color palette for those, I'm going to just group them together and um, just copy and paste them and put them into other groupings. And uh, I will take a uh, uh, HSL, just a, like it's just a a color changer, 
and, um, and, and put it onto the sprinkle just so that they're at least a little bit um, brighter or just different colors. Um, that way it just doesn't look like it's an image that is um, kind of copy and pasted. And it, you give the illusion that I've actually gone in and hand put those, those sprinkles onto there. And uh, one thing to remember on here, it looks a little bit messy, but because of the nature of the UV wrap, it's it's not going to show all of these together so you you just kind of have to be uh, conscious as to where on this plane is going to be you know the top of the ice cream or the side of the ice cream and and decide on you know if you did have to put like for example um, something of a main focus just where it's going to be so I've gone ahead and saved that image I'm going to now replace it onto the UV map there it is and look at that that is just you know looks a lot more fun already with the sprinkles I'm just going to tweak the uh, the scale of it the rotation and uh, I can see already that there's a little bit of an issue on the side so I'm just going to go in there and, and tweak it again so now it's ready for a animation again just to see how it's going to react and how it's going to look um, it's very important to me that everything on every angle uh, looks correct and um, just making sure it all is going to work uh, in, in, in the game so I'm, I'm zoomed out quite a bit uh, and I'm gonna see and make sure that everything is is right before I I render all the frames and, and ship it out It's looking pretty good now. I'm I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm all ready to call this a finished model. I hope that everybody enjoyed the live stream from the other day. I know I had some technical issues, but uh, I really hope that everybody that was able to watch it uh, at least uh, got to learn what they what they wanted to learn. Uh, I'm always available if you want to uh, talk with me on on Discord. It's discord.me/tunkins. Um, send me a, a message or or uh, you know ping me on online I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about uh, just about anything as far as design goes and uh, if you do see um, Mauricio SG online this is his item concept that he submitted so please congratulate him um, the item is now live on uh, Toonkins so if you comment your username on the uh, live stream video uh, you will be getting this item without having to use your Toonkins coins um, and uh, for everybody else that didn't get a chance to do that you will see this item featured in our shop on June 4th so uh, thank you again for the support uh, this has been a lot of fun so far and I can't wait to build more items for you guys